And now for our third candidate, Dana Larson. Hello, and thank you all for being here today, whether you're here in person or whether you're watching online, to share in this important moment in the history of our party and of our province. I have been honored by this unique opportunity to travel all across this beautiful province of ours, to meet thousands of my fellow New Democrats, and to share a vision for our party and for the future of British Columbia. I would like to begin today by thanking the members of our party who have been so welcoming and given such a warm and positive reception to my leadership campaign. It speaks well to the diversity and the strength of our party that any member can step forward and become a legitimate candidate for the leadership of our party. And so I am humbled to be here today and to put forward my platform for your consideration. Our team ran a campaign based on strong policy and bold visionary ideas. And we based that upon four pillars, democracy, sustainability, social justice, and smart on crime. To me, democracy and socialism are two sides of the same coin, a government by the people and for the people. But sadly, we are losing our democratic rights in this country and in our province as the corporate elite takes more and more control over our society and our institutions. And I oppose this hierarchy and want to replace it with a truly grassroots democracy. I believe that as a party, we must set the example we wish our province to live up to. And so our campaign has called for more democracy within the BC NDP to ensure that our grassroots members are always empowered and always informed and able to shape party policy on an ongoing basis. And to strengthen and protect the democracy of our province, I have called to lower the threshold of signatures required for an item to be brought forward on a referendum. It is only because of our referendum system brought in by the NDP in 1996 that we have had any chance to stand up against the HST. With a more accessible referendum system, perhaps the citizens of our province could have stopped the scandalous giveaway of BC Rail, the carving up of BC Hydro, and the steady erosion of public health care and education in our province. I would also protect democracy in BC by withdrawing from the New West Partnership Trade Agreement, the successor and expansion of TILMA. These are anti-democratic agreements which empower corporations to sue governments to, when they don't like our policy. This is not democracy and much, must be resisted. My second pillar is sustainability which means taking a long-term view of things and setting policies which reflect the love we have for future generations. My campaign is called for Sustainable BC, which was passed unanimously at convention by BC NDP members to be at the forefront of our next election campaign and at the heart of our policy development. And our campaign is called to shift our province's focus away from cars and roads for transportation and towards rail and public transport. And our campaign has talked about the Agricultural Land Reserve, a common heritage held for the benefit of all British Columbians. I believe we must improve British Columbia's food self-sufficiency by strengthening the ALR, using government procurement to get ALR-grown food into our schools and our hospitals where those who need it most will have fresh, locally grown food. Sustainability also means stopping raw log exports, rejecting the Enbridge pipeline. We must work to preserve BC's natural heritage and the jobs it can create for our people now. Stable, long-term jobs that will sustain families into the future. Our third pillar is social justice. 
And that means making sure that every citizen gets a share in the bounty of our province and that no one is left behind or abandoned due to poverty or bad fortune. To balance our budget and ensure we can continue to provide services for all British Columbians, we must make sure that everyone is paying their fair share. So our campaign has pledged to reverse all of the Liberals' corporate tax cuts, which would generate $1.1 billion in additional government revenue. We've also proposed a modest income tax increase on the top 0.6% of earners, so that income over a quarter million dollars a year would see an 11% tax bump. This would generate $1.3 billion annually, covering the remainder of our deficit and leaving $500 million, which I would put into K-12 education so that we could reopen rural schools. <laughs> Finally, our campaign has echoed Nicola Simons' call for a $12 minimum wage by 2012. Since we agree that a minimum wage which keeps people below the poverty line is not appropriate or fair. And finally, we come to being smart on crime, the fourth pillar of our campaign. As Premier, I would stand up to Stephen Harper's expensive prison spending spree, for which he wants the provinces to foot the bill. Our campaign is called to recognize that more police does not always make our society safer, and that prison is not the solution for drug addiction, homelessness, or mental health issues. And one, one key way to improve public health and safety in our province is to end the failed policy we call the war on drugs. I have pledged that as Premier, I would craft an evidence-based drug policy that focused on health and public order instead of just blindly punishing those with addiction or mental health issues. And this would include, on the one hand, expanding the supervised injection site to other communities, and on the other hand, working to end the criminalization of marijuana in British Columbia. A legal, unionized cannabis industry in this province would be a huge windfall and benefit to all British Columbians. And as Premier, as Premier I would begin by using our province's jurisdiction over health care to take medicinal marijuana users out of the criminal justice system to license and regulate medicinal marijuana dispensaries and their suppliers to ensure safety for patients and for the communities in which they live. <laughs> Finally, I am pleased to say that our campaign has endorsed John Horgan as our second ballot choice. But regardless of the outcome of this leadership race, I pledge that my team and I will continue to work in solidarity towards all of the goals we have outlined within the NDP and for our beloved province. Thank you again to my family, my campaign team, and to all the members of the BC NDP for your warm and enthusiastic response to my campaign. I am humbled and honored by your acceptance and support. Thank you very much.